Right, well, here we are in the height of the rainy season, which anyone that lives in England will know starts around about January and goes right through till December. Um, it's for a once it's actually a little bit of a break in the weather it's dry at the moment it's just getting light so i'm gonna have a wander out see if i can find a fox or a deer So I just spotted a fox there that was just on the edge of the wood in front of me, which is quite a distance. Um, that is uh, it's about 300 metres from here. I'd give him a little squeak, but I don't think he would have heard it. It was a bit too far and the wind's going the wrong way, but it's just gone back into the wood. I'll leave that for now, I think, because by the time I get there, he could have gone through the wood and gone. Uh, so I'm just going to stalk up through the fields and just see if we can find anything else. I'll bump into it at some point. few squirrels down there but no oh deer it's not a particularly nice time of year to be hunting stuff at the minute and uh, with the uh, ground being as wet as it is trying to get a, a deer out of here would be a bit of a nightmare so I'm really only after row because at least they'd be light enough and just put them over my shoulder and carry them out but a big old fallow buck not really ideal not unless it's near a bit of a track anyway Move on. The fields seem pretty devoid of anything much living. We'll look for the wood, I think. just push my way through this wood very quietly all I've seen squirrels but there's a couple of woods on this um, on this farm little patches of, of woodland this one and there's another one over the back of the farm and quite often you get a roe deer or a couple of roe deer will lay up in these woods occasional fallow as well but there's nothing here at the minute not that I've seen here and um, 
I mean, down through the wood this way, there's a road at the bottom, so I have to be a little bit careful not to get sort of too near that, otherwise I won't get a chance for a shot anyway. So I'm going to double back and uh, go and have a little look through the other wood, I think. Well, I've not had a lot of luck the last few days. Um, I didn't have any luck the other morning. And uh, we've had a lot of wind, really strong winds, and uh, a lot of rain. We've had weeks and weeks of rain. Pretty much December was a complete washout. Uh, we're into early January now. And um, yeah, finally, we've got a break in the weather. So I've come out tonight, um, different farm tonight. The farmer here seen a fox just after sort of five. Um, yeah, about five, between five and six. He's seen it a couple of times now. I've seen it as well. Um, so the plan is really just to have a little sit out, see if I can um, bump into that fox and have a look. I've had a look around for a little while, so there might be a few more about. It's the mating season at the moment. They're pairing up. They're really into the uh, um, into the into the season now. So there's a lot of foxes crossing boundaries. A lot of dog foxes will be. Um, getting about now sort of crossing over territories and stuff it's all a bit of a free-for-all so there's a good chance that we might see one or, or more foxes might see them sort of pairing up um, so I've had a little scope swap as you can see I've swapped the element helix which I normally use um, HDLR model and I've swapped it over for this this is the new Hick Alpex the LRF 4k version and I've swapped it over using the um, quick release mounts so I can chop and change between scopes without losing zero on either of them. I've been out, got this zeroed in. Um, yeah, I've got it zero for 100 meters on the 243, the Mauser 243, the M12. I've got a, uh, this one's the light builds one actually, the serious light builds. IR. I'd normally use a PBIR, so, but to be honest, there's not much difference between the two. Um, so I've bung this one on tonight. Um, yeah, not really much more I can tell you about it. This scope, as I say, it's the LRF, so it's got a built in laser rangefinder in here, and it's also got a ballistic calculator in there. So if you uh, use the rangefinder, you ping your target, it'll actually show you a highlighted um, cross on the vertical bar which then becomes your aiming point anyway enough waffling on let's go and uh, set ourselves up on hill in position and see what uh, see what's about it's actually a really nice still evening tonight it's uh temperatures just sort of dropped a little bit so it's a little bit colder than it has been for a while but as I say, there's hardly any wind at all, which uh, which is quite good, but it doesn't cover any noise in that you make when you're walking about. But it does make longer shots easy, so hopefully we'll uh, find something out and about. I've not even got to where I wanted to set up and out at about 300 metres I have got three foxes out on the bank in front of me all chasing around so they're clearly pairing up um, I don't want to hang around too long so I'm going to head straight down into the valley and up the other side and hopefully get a shot of one of these See if I can get a shot.
first box down. Right, well, there were several foxes there, three foxes in fact, running around on the bank and they ran all around the bowl in front of me, chasing each other about, barking, uh, but I, I just couldn't get one that was in a range that I was sort of comfortable to, to sort of, uh, to just take from where I was and how I was set up. Anyway, as it happened, I had one come down the bank in front of me, probably around about two, 200 metres, something like that. And he came straight down towards me, he cut through the fence and he started coming uh, along the, the sort of the base of the bowl and then it, well, I had to basically take the shot pretty quick while he was in the base of the bowl, so he didn't come up the bank where I was uh, where I was sat. Um, anyway, he, he dropped down there, and uh, I think it was 100, yeah, about 150, or just a bit more, 150 meters. Uh, so I didn't need to sort of aim off anything. I was just aimed straight at it, hey! making a difference of the two, four, three at that sort of distance. Anyway, um, and yeah, uh, I hit him. I, I just clipped him actually on the front, probably sort of somewhere near the front of the chest I think and he sort of reeled back and then he ran about 10 yards and I think he would have just gone over but I just put another shot straight into him just to make sure he wasn't going to get back up again. So not a, not a, a sort of a, a nice sort of shot how I like him and they just dropped but uh, a fox down nonetheless. Right, well I'm going to wait now just to... Uh, just to see if one of the other ones follows that one down that bank. Um, it's a good possibility if that one happens to be a vixen then uh, there's a good possibility that one of the dog foxes might pick up on the scent from that and follow her down into the uh, into the bottom of the um, bottom of the bowl. But anyway yeah our picks proved its worth. got another one coming down that same bank so I'm hoping he's going to follow the same route and come down into the bottom of this bowl again. Okay, so that one did exactly what I was hoping it would do and followed the first one down into the bowl and um, I think it was following the scent because it kind of zig zigzagged about a little bit and then uh, came down lovely, about the same distance actually, he's a little bit closer, I think he was about 139, I think I ranged him at. So again, just point and shoot and um, that one just, uh, just went straight down, just dropped that lovely. So within probably, I don't know, 45 minutes of being out, got two foxes down. Really good start. I've seen another one or two about as well. I've seen one which went over the top of that, that same bank and down the other side. So I'm assuming that's probably one of these three. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit longer and just see if anything else follows the scent of these two foxes. And then um, I'll wander down them and... and pick them up if we don't see anything else. Right, I've got another one sat further down the valley on the bank. He's probably a good 300, 350 metres away. Um, so I'm just going to work my way down, just see if I can walk straight down towards him and, uh, well, 
Hopefully get a shot. Right, so I didn't get very far there. I thought I'd be able to just walk straight across the bowl without him, without him seeing me. It's quite a dark evening, but obviously I'm not as quite as well hidden as I thought I was. That fox has just gone up the bank and he's going straight over the top now as we speak. He's just gone over the top, so he's gone over the other side of the, uh, the middle bit that we've got in this bowl here. So I'm going to walk around the bottom and hopefully I'm going to uh, bump into him coming down the other side or going along the bank behind. All right, let's see if we can catch him up. That was another one. The one that I saw that went over the top um, was, well, I don't think it could have got down to here that quick. Uh, the one that I saw was going over the left hand edge of this bank. And as I walked down through the bowl here, this one was up on the bank in front of me to the right. And he, he looked like he was just mooching about on the bank. Anyway, I quickly, I used the rangefinder actually on this and uh, it gave me a range, uh, what was it, 200 and 213 metres I think it was, there or thereabouts, and when I ping that it's just dropped the crosshair down just a little bit, sort of just re-aim uh, re with that, and uh, I hit him, I'm not sure, I'm been able to have a look yet and see where it hit him obviously but it hit him and he ran straight down the bank I could see he was hit he was hit hard tail come up classic sign of a fox that's been hit and um, he ran straight down the bank and I was watching for the scope and I saw him just go over and just gave it a quick check with the thermal watched him for a few a few seconds just to make sure there's no more movement he's not going anywhere that one's down as well so three foxes down again probably within I don't know how long I've been out now without checking my phone, but probably an hour and a half, maybe a bit longer, two hours, probably about two hours actually. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty good going actually, because on this farm you don't normally see all that many foxes. They don't normally have too much of a, of a problem with them. Um, during the lambing season we get quite a few sort of come in from the, the, the ground around, but as a rule, there's not that many that are sort of resonant on the ground. So I think it is basically, as I was saying earlier, these uh, these foxes. A lot of these foxes, they're just uh, moving around, crossing crossing territories, um, just hunting for a mate. And yeah, it's uh, they just turn up anywhere and everywhere. Right. Well. I've had that shot now, so that's probably scared the other fox off that was round round the uh, the corner of the the bowl here. But I'm going to walk round anyway, just to see. Might still be about. Right. What right result? Let's go and have a look. I'll just see if there's anything else about. There we go, right, our fox has carried on around and he's a bit further around on the side of the bank here. A long way off though. 
I'm not going to bother, I don't think, walking out to that because um, I've got a couple of fences there to get across and probably by the time I get there he's just going to have either gone over the bank or he'll just go further on round and I'll be, uh, I'll be, well, just trying to chase my tail with him really I think. But I'm going to hang around in the bowl here because there seems to be quite a few foxes just sort of cutting through here. Right, well we've got another fox coming down the middle of the bowl now, straight towards me. So I'm going to walk down to the bottom of this bank and hopefully, unless he veers off, intersect him when he gets down the bottom. Right, well, that one, he was going along the top of the bowl. He started, uh, one minute he went to the right, next minute he went the other way, he went to the left, and he was ended up going along the top, along the left-hand side, and he was right on the skyline, and I couldn't get a shot where he was, and I thought he was going to go over the other side and I'll not see him again, so I gave him a little squeak, and he turned, and I see the head just sort of tilt, and then... Bosh, he come running straight down the bank, straight towards me, and he got to, um, I think it was 76 metres, and um, I can't remember if I gave him a shout or just wait for him to, to, to sort of pause, either way, he stopped and um, yeah, thump, down he went, so, nice easy shot that one, not too far at all, four foxes down, <laughs> very pleased with that. Right, well, we best have a wander out, pick this lot up, and then um, that'll probably be that'll probably be it for the evening unless we bump into anything else. Right, so this one was the second one that came in, which I'm thinking is probably yep a dog fox, as you might expect. And I would imagine the other one over here is probably going to be a vixen. I would imagine, which would have been why it was following. I'm just guessing it might not be. It's a bit big. That's a big fox. That's another dog fox. Well, wow. look at the size of that boy. He's a beauty, that one. That looks like the uh, Alpex done the job there. Actually, it actually looks like a an old, an old wound of some sort there. He might have been shot with a HMR or something maybe. Broken up on the shoulder perhaps, I don't know. But something's had him that side. That's a 243. So yeah, good fox that. And then this one, a bit of a mess. But uh, that one is a vixen. And that's amazing that ran anywhere. That was the one that ran down the bank. That was fox number three. As you can see, that's hit really hard. Um, but it looks like it's broken up on the shoulder and from outside. But um, yeah, so it, it did the business in the end. But uh, it took a yeah, it took a lot of punishment that one. And that one is the fourth one. He was uh, about seventy-six meters, I think it was. I see him on top of the top of the bank here and he was skyline so uh, he was going to go off to my left and over the bank so I gave him a little squeak and he come uh, running down the bank lovely 
I think I first saw him about 150 metres, something like that. Anyway, as you can see, it's a bit of a mess come out the out the bottom of him there, but that was partly because of the angle he was stood on this bank is quite steep. I drilled a shot in probably here somewhere, and that's just where it's come out. And uh, that again's a dog fox. Excellent. So, a good evening this evening. That's four foxes down, so we've had three dog foxes, one good sized one, and uh, also a little vixen as well. Um, which is, is brilliant because they'll be lambing here very soon. The farm next door has already started lambing, they lamb early in January and then again in April. Um, so yeah, it's, it's good just to, to knock down a few of the foxes around from the, the local area. And it's also been a good um, good test for the Alpex. It's had a good sort of kind of run in with the um, first four foxes of the year. Uh, it's performed well, happy with that. And I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.